All right, guys, I'm getting ready to do a video, and I'm glad I went and checked. Um, a couple of days ago, I went ahead and harvested my uh, golden beets. I got them out, and I did a video trimming them up and how I trimmed them and the reason why I trimmed them and everything. And so now this has been about almost three days later, and I am just now going to go ahead and can my beets. And I started to, to do the video, and I realized I better check to see if I have, make sure I did do a video of this. Well, I do remember doing it. I went and checked, well, like two days ago, I went through all my files, things that are old that I don't want. I just started deleting stuff, and I got a feeling I deleted that video. So, here's my golden beets. I'll show you really quick what I do and the reason why I do, the, do it this way. <clears throat> all right, here's my beets. Now, my golden beets. Um, of course, I... I learned from doing the red ones. I made a big mistake, and I cut them really close right here. And then when you would go boil the beets down real quick, the whole water would turn, you know, the the the, the color of the red beets, red water everywhere. And I started looking into files and stuff, or in videos, and people say, cut them shorter, I mean, longer, leave about an inch. Do not cut the bottoms. So this is what I did. I did all my beets. This is what I got out of here. I've already got a bunch that's in there now. I've got jars sitting in there waiting to start boiling. Um, it should be able to do, I'm guessing, either uh, probably right around six or seven pint jars. I'm just going to say six. And um, so I'm letting that stuff um, heat up and um, sterilize. And I'm waiting for that. That's water. And what we're going to do in here is... We got to let these things, you can see the water's turning a little gold in there. What we're going to do is let these things, we want to be able to take a knife and stab it and to check it. If you can go through the, the uh, beet, it's done. Then we'll pull it off. Then we're going to get some cold water. We're going to put the beet in cold water to stop the cooking process. And then you basically just pinch the beet and the skin should come right off. Most of it will. So when I get this close to being where I need to be, I'll bring you guys back and I'll show you what we're doing. All right, guys, all right, this is the first batch I took out of the water, and it was in there for approximately 20 minutes, and they are actually feel nice and soft. You stab it in there real easy. This is what you want right there. Now, the next thing we're going to do is basically we can just pinch them, and that skin, most of that skin should come right off. All right, now what should happen is we should be able to go ahead and just pinch them, Pinch them down, and the skin comes right off. Look at that. Perfect. Does exactly what it's supposed to do. All of it, even the, the, the top, the bottom, every bit of it. We'll cut out the bad, whatever that is. There we go. Move on over to the next one. And it just pinches, it comes right off. Perfect. Can't wait to try these canned. I've never had gold um, beets. Here we go. I've got another cold water over here just to stop them and also to rinse them off a little bit more. But we'll keep on peeling. Look at that. Some may peel off a little easy. Some may not. And I had that happen the last batch I did. Like right here. A little bit tough. But we're good. I'll get the rest of this when I go to cut out the bat and cut these up. All right, guys, that's what we got to do. I mean, it's simple. My jars are out of the water. Let me, let me get this off the table here real quick. I'll put it back. I got my jars sitting there waiting on me. Um, the water is hot. I do. I know they tell you don't have to, but I do heat my lids always it's worked for me from day one. I'm going to continue doing it. I get my next batch in here right now. Looking good. I just put them in. Oh, I don't know what it was because I didn't look. I think right around 1045 ish, I put them in. So there we go. Um, yeah, let me continue over here. When I get them over here, slice them however I'm going to do it, and then I'll turn this back on. 
All right, guys, I had to take a break. I had to go get my grandkids. I had to restart this. I covered these up. I have all these filled. I also put in some onion, if you can see it. I've already got my mix in here. Um, what I used is, on this, it's because there's uh, seven jars, I used um, three cups of water, two cups of vinegar, and a uh, third of a cup of sugar, and two tablespoons of, no, two teaspoons of salt, and mixed it up. This is a cold um, drench. I'm going to put them in cold. I have already wiped these down, the rims, with vinegar and water. So right now what i got to do is put the lids on. I just redid the lids and uh, go with what i got. I didn't want to touch nothing, but my magnet, I can't find it. My hands were clean. I made sure I washed everything very good. Wish I had my magnet, but I don't. But I, my hands are clean. All right, I got all the lids on. My camera turned off. Um, all the lids on. Let's put these rings on. I don't ever go really tight with my rings. I'll check them again here in a second. One thing, guys. If your rings are, are any bit of rust on them, just get rid of them. If the rings are dented, get rid of them. It's not worth it. It probably won't seal. There we go. Now, this is what I do for checking them. Uh, th just like I do all my other cannings, I take them, they touch, touch it right there, and I give just that, and that's it. Next one, right there. Not much more. Oh, that's good. If you hear the grandkids, they're in the next room. <laughs> All right. We're going to go ahead and get these in the water bath or in the pressure canner. Already got the water up to the first line. That's for pints. Get these in. Let's get this on. I, uh, I did have to get into another pint. Um, I do have other wide mouth jars, but they're all up in the attic. I wasn't climbing up there, so I used the regular mouth. See here, I got it on high. It's on high. Yep, everything's there good. Um, so now we're going to line up our marks. There's a mark right there in this lid. There's a mark on that handle. That's where that's going to sit together. It fits right easy. And then you're just going to spin it. There we go. Now here's the deal. We need to get this thing boiling water. Get steam coming out of here for about 5 to 10 minutes. Once that's done, then I need to put this weight on here. I'm at 1,000 feet sea level. So I need to get up to 15 is what it says for 30 minute cook time. So we're going to 15 pounds of pressure at 30 minutes once we get steam, steady steam coming out of here. All right, I'll bring it back when it's starting to do that. As you can see, we do have a good steam going. This just popped up and it shouldn't have, not until I put that on there. But we did, I wanted to show you this is going on. All right, now, some people don't know the process of why that pops up. Okay, when this thing builds pressure, all right, there's a little tab that's inside this bucket that's a flat area okay and when you rotate and spin this around this piece when it gets up to pressure or get starting to you know uh, boil real good this when this pops up it actually locks this lid so you can't turn the lid at all it's a safety device so you cannot undo it now the next thing if people have heard people worried about the, the, the canner blowing up and all that stuff all right back here 
right there is a rubber plug. That rubber plug, if it overpressurizes, that plug will actually just blow right out of the top of the lid. There you go. That may be something that everybody should keep in their stock so they have them. That in a the rubber O-ring. And that's probably something that I need to start doing. Uh, order up one so we have it. Um, now what we're waiting on is the needle to go to 15. When it goes to 15 I, and it stays there, I will go ahead and start the timer for 30 minutes. Like I said, I'm at a thousand foot sea level. And what they say for beats is 15 pounds of pressure for 30 minutes. Once I can control staying at that 15 pound mark, I've got this turned down on low. Let's see what happens. I'm pretty sure it's starting to drop a little bit. So I'm going to bring it up to maybe around just after medium. And if we, as long as we can keep it in that 15 mark, very close. See, needle's going back up. So we need to go halfway point. I'm going to hit the timer because I can control this. And we are right now at 30 minutes. Counting down. Keeping it at 15 pounds. And then we'll shut it down. All right, we just clocked down just now. It shut down. We still were at 15. Let's turn this off. Now we're just going to let this thing cool off naturally. It'll probably take about an hour. And what will ha eventually happen is the gauge will go to zero. When it goes down close to zero, this will drop right here. And then you're, almost, you're able to remove the lid. But we'll leave it alone for a couple hours. If you notice, now the pressure is relieved. I've pulled the cover off, the little cap that was on here, but you see that tab is down. So now that allows me to spin this. See how it's spinning? All right, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab it real quick. Hold on. All right, got the top off. Now, remember I told you earlier about this little ledge? Okay, here it is. That, there's that little ledge that sticks out, and then we had this right here. Doing this with one hand. That piece pops up when it pops up it goes under here and locks it so you can't even move it or beside it rather so you can't even move it. it's what it is beside it so you see how it's up in the air right there all right when it's when it's under pressure it's like this down when it's not it's there so when it goes down it locks into this so you can't use it remember i told you about that rubber plug there's the underside of that and we're going to order another one up. So if you get extreme pressure, that plug will pop. All right, so let's look in here. Looks like every one of my jars have survived. They're doing good. Let's pull them out. Here we go. Let me get them all out really quick. They all look like they've popped already. Oh, get over here. Hold on for a second, guys. All right, so there we go. Um, every one of them has popped. Everything looks good. They're all nice. Let me show you what we got. There you go. These are the golden beets with onions in them. They all look great. All right, there you go. Now time to clean everything up and put it up for the next use. You all have a great day.